Welcome back to Forever Haunted for another ghostly episode of Ghost Stories to Beach Sounds. Today we have a great selection for you to keep your spook on. So sit back and relax, cause ghost stories are up next. Growing up, I was fascinated by the paranormal, especially ghosts. I found that my curiosity peaked every time I walked by an old, creepy house or picked up any antiques in stores. My dream was to eventually go ghost hunting somewhere locally, having watched every episode of every haunted location show on television. Ultimately, my dream came true in a very unexpected way, as I was the one who became the hunted. My first encounter with the paranormal happened around Christmas after I turned 15. Our house was decorated from top to bottom in tinsel and lights, and my mother kept the house smelling like baked goods as she was constantly baking and making all manner of sweets for the holidays. I'd been saving up my allowance for some time because I wanted to add something special to our holiday decor, an antique tree ornament. I'd looked through several stores locally, but none had any ornaments that were in decent condition. Most were damaged from years of neglect. In the last store that I visited, though, I found the perfect ornament. It was round, egg-like in shape, and made of tin. It had been painted in jewel-like shades of red, green, and gold, and featured an inset image of a dove. I felt attracted to this ornament inexplicably, like a strong magnet whose pull was unbreakable. The store owner said that it had come from a local Victorian-era home that had recently been demolished to make way for some new townhomes. The owners of the home were a wealthy couple who had been well-known and well-liked in the community, and their twin children, a boy and a girl. After finalizing my purchase, I went home and placed it on our tree. Because it was the holiday season, I had developed a bad habit of watching the movie Home Alone until I fell asleep every night. However, this night proved to be different from the rest. As usual, I turned on my fan and started watching Home Alone. Shortly after that, I fell asleep. I dreamt that I was lying in a bed, violently ill with cold chills, even though I was burning up with fever and barely able to breathe. I looked up to see a man and woman in Victorian-era clothing staring back at me sadly, tears in their eyes. The man grasped a pillow in his hand. He leaned down to kiss me on my cheek before covering my face with the pillow. I immediately snapped awake at this moment, gasping for breath and sweat pouring off my body. My eyes started to regain focus as I stared at the bright television screen, home alone having ended hours earlier. That is when I noticed the two shadows at the end of the bed. They were abnormally dark, almost as black as a starless night sky. I could not believe my eyes, but I was staring at two shadow people. Two peculiar things struck me about these shadow people, though. First, they were small, about the size of a six- or seven-year-old child. Second, they each had distinctive shapes. One was masculine and the other feminine. They stood there, staring at me. Then suddenly, they began moving around the room quickly, like when you blink and something has changed locations. They did this many times in a row before disappearing into my closet. I tried to go back to sleep, but the combination of adrenaline and terror refused to let me. 
This series of events continued to happen over the next three to four days. The lack of sleep was taking its toll on me physically, causing my mother to ask if something was wrong. I hesitated to tell her at first because I thought she would immediately think I was going insane, but I gave in and told her of the horrific nightmares and the shadow people in my room. She told me that she had seen them too, and that sometimes they would merge into one massive blob-like form in the kitchen. At this point, I knew that I was not going crazy, and that she believed me. We immediately started thinking about why these events had started happening. Finally, my mother made the connection that I had overlooked. These events did not start until the day I bought that antique ornament for the tree. As quickly as I could, I took that ornament back to the antique store where I had purchased it and asked the owner if he would take it back. He obliged, and I told him of the events that had happened in my home. The store owner was shocked at first, but he sighed before telling me more about the ornament's previous owners. They were a wealthy couple who had two children, a boy and a girl. Sadly, during that time, a horrific strain of influenza had swept through the area, and their children, unfortunately, became ill with it. None of the treatments known during that time worked, and it was believed that the children died from it. However, rumors had swirled that the parents, not wanting to see their children suffer any longer, smothered them out of pity. He said that their deaths occurred around the holidays, and that it appears that their spirits may have clung to the ornament, waiting for someone to tell the truth to after all of these years. I could not believe that I had experienced something paranormal like this. After I gave the ornament back to the store owner, my nightmares stopped completely, and the shadow figures quit appearing as well. To this day, I still have feelings of dread and nervousness whenever I'm alone in dark places. I've researched shadow people since and found a plethora of resources to help me deal with what I experienced. I've also learned that sometimes, objects hold on to their pasts, for better or for worse. This probably happened around two and a half or three years ago, but it still scares me senseless every time I think about it. The whole ordeal lasted about six months and began when my boyfriend was getting ready to move out of his apartment and into a nice duplex downtown. The homes down there are old. The area was finished around the 1950s, so most of them are up to 20 years older than that. A day or two before he and his roommates moved into the place, my boyfriend had a very vivid dream. He dreamt that something was trying to haunt him and his roommates and their current apartment, so he decided to try and perform an exorcism to get the ghost to leave. He had been sitting on the bed doing some sort of meditation when suddenly the ghost of a young girl appeared. She was pissed. She started throwing things and yelling at him, Get the fuck out of my house! Over and over again. He said that she was screaming so hard the cords in her neck stood out. And she wasn't alone. A tall man hovered above her, silent and watching my boyfriend with empty eyes. He had woken up in a rush next to me, breathing heavily and looking around the room frantically. It freaked me out, watching him panic, unable to catch his breath. After they moved into the new house downtown, things were going well, except for the occasional bizarre dream. We didn't think too much about them. One day, we were all outside hanging on the porch, when the neighbor from the connecting duplex came over 
and started describing his own weird dream to us. We all stood there, freaked out, as we listened to him explain. It was almost identical to the dreams that my boyfriend had. The longer they were in the house, things besides the dream started happening. Weird little things. Lights would turn on randomly. Floorboards would creak with the sound of footsteps when no one was walking down the hall. The rocking chair would move on its own. Things like that. We had all acknowledged by that point that there was something in the house with us, but that it wasn't mean or vengeful. I had never really been scared about the things going on at the duplex up until that point. Not until one night when I was sleeping in my own house. I'd been having a weird dream, the kind where you kind of wake up in that state of almost sleep but can still sense the room around you. There was something in my room with me I could tell, but I couldn't see anything. I was looking around, trying to find it, when, whatever it was, sat down on my chest. I couldn't breathe. My legs were pinned to the bed. I couldn't even move. Minutes passed as I lay there, struggling to breathe or move, before the pressure lifted and I could jump. I had never been so terrified in my life. Immediately I called my boyfriend and he soothed me back to sleep over the phone. The next day, however, he told me that he wondered if maybe what I experienced had something to do with the girl or hovering man from his dream. Things got creepier from then on out. I got a call from my boyfriend one night after he had gotten off work. He had been at home, sitting in his room in the basement playing guitar, when he heard something in the other basement room that startled him. He continued to play, even though he was spooked. When he heard footsteps coming from upstairs though, he grabbed his phone and ran outside. He was home alone getting as far away from the house as he could with the landline, he called me. We talked for a little, having a normal conversation, when he stopped. What is it? I asked him, hearing his breathing change over the phone. There's a figure on the front porch, he told me, whispering. He said the figure was just standing in front of the door, waiting distinctly visible against the porch lights. It wasn't until his roommate got home a few hours later that he finally would walk near the house again. A little while after that, I was staying at my dad's house out in the country for a couple of nights. Sleeping in his office one night, I had a pretty vivid dream. Most of it was just nonsense, but this girl kept appearing. She had long, bushy brown hair, wore glasses, and had on a big, puffy, 70s-style winter coat. She kept glaring at me, and at one point, it felt like someone was hovering over me as I was sleeping. I jumped awake, more so startled than scared, and went back to sleep. A week or so later, I told my boyfriend about it, watching as his eyes widened and he grew quiet. My description matched exactly the girl he had seen in his first dream. About a month later, after a party we threw at the house, one of our friends ended up sleeping on the couch. When one of my boyfriend's roommates woke up around 2 a.m., she was no longer on the couch. Later that afternoon, she called us and told us that around 1 in the morning, she heard someone walking around in the kitchen for a really long time. Ignoring it, she tried to go back to sleep. It was then, as she was on the verge of dreaming, that she heard the footsteps take off running. They ran hard and fast from the kitchen, stopping directly in front of the couch where she slept. Without a second thought, she jumped up, grabbed her things, and went home in the freezing cold 
at nearly 3.15 in the morning. It was only a couple of nights after that incident that my boyfriend had the biggest scare. He had a very, very vivid dream, lucid almost. In the dream, he had been trying to get out of the house, but he was trapped. Something pushed him down, and halfway between the basement and the first floor, he was stuck at the waist, something pushing on his shoulders still. He had been struggling hard, trying to wake up, move, speak anything. When he finally did wake up, he looked over to see a bluish haze in the corner of the room. It looked like a part of a torso, a woman's torso, before it disappeared into his bookcase. He jumped out of bed and ran upstairs as fast as he could, banging on his roommate's bedroom door. They sat on the couch as my boyfriend explained what happened, when all of a sudden, the lamp next to them turned itself on. Refusing to stay inside any longer, they sat awake on the porch all night. Alone in the house the next day, my boyfriend calmly told whatever was in their house to leave them alone. The activity ceased after that, but the house never stopped freaking us out. One of the roommate's father, who was a Native American medicine man, even did a cleansing ritual at the house. That ritual cleansed out whatever was left, and the heaviness in the home dissipated.